Hello, and welcome to another edition of our Conversations with Sound Artists podcast. I'm Glenn Kaiser. I'm the director of the Dolby Institute, and this series is a co-production of the Dolby Institute and the Soundworks Collection. We've got something special for you today. Recently, I led a masterclass conversation at the Los Angeles Film Festival with the writer-director Ryan Coogler on his use of sound design and music in his films that he's made, specifically Creed and Fruitvale Station. We were joining the conversation by Ryan's composer, Ludwig Gorenson, who has composed the music for both of the films, and sound designer Steve Bodeker from Skywalker Sound, who was the sound designer on Creed. So this is basically just the entire conversation that we had in front of a sold out, packed audience at the Los Angeles Film Festival. And uh, it was just kind of too good not to put it together for a podcast and present it for you guys to listen to. So I hope you enjoy this and find it interesting. Here we go with our masterclass conversation with Ryan Kugler, Ludwig Gorenson, and Steve Bodeker. So I'm Glenn Kaiser. I'm the director of the Dolby Institute. And the Dolby Institute is a program that we started a couple years ago, basically to do exactly this, is to, to go around and provide education and inspiration for emerging you know, young filmmakers and content creators about how to use image and sound more creatively for storytelling. I'm super excited about the program uh, that we're doing tonight because, uh, you know, we do a lot of talks about, about uh, sound design and music. It's very rare that we actually uh, have the opportunity to have the director with us uh, to share his or her thoughts about that part of the creative process and how they use these tools creatively for storytelling. So tonight we've got uh, a total, I, I, you know, I think uh, not, not a double or a triple, but a home run with the director and the composer and the sound designer uh, for Creed. So if you guys will come on up and we'll get this thing going. Uh, first up, Ryan Coogler. So, uh, you know, you guys know who Ryan is, but uh, he, he exploded on the scene in 2013 with uh, Fruitvale Station, uh, right? And then followed up uh, last year uh, with Creed. Um, we've also got his music composer, uh, Ludwig Gorenson, here with us. So I've got my cheat sheet. Uh, in addition to working on both of uh, Ryan's films, uh, Ludwig has done... Uh, a huge amount of really impressive work uh, in television on shows like Community, uh, New Girl, and my new favorite, uh, uh, Angie Tribeca, which is a, a pretty crazy, fun show. And then uh, sound designer and mixer Steve Bodeker. Come on up, Steve. So Steve got an Oscar nomination a couple years ago for the movie All Is Lost, uh, which was sort of a, an amazing tour de force for sound. Uh, but he's uh, got a, a really amazing uh, list of credits. He's a, a sound designer uh, working out of Skywalker Sound up north. Um, and he's, this is just a partial list, but he's worked on Bridge of Spies, I Origins, Beasts of the Southern Wild, uh, Tron Legacy, Hellboy, and, uh, and Fight Club. So I'm yeah. thrilled to have you guys that. here. So the, the way this is going to work is we've got, a, we've got some clips to show. We've got a couple of clips uh, from Creed, and then we've got a clip from Fruitvale Station as well. Um, so uh, we're going to talk a little bit, and then we'll show a clip, and then we'll talk a little bit and kind of go back and forth like that. And then we'll have some time for questions at the end. Um, so but, but before we get started, I just wanted to start with you, Ryan, and ask you, you know, it, it seems like in, in my experience, a lot of young uh, writer directors, which is which is what you are. You write as well as as direct. Um, they tend to, especially in their earlier films, they're really focused on on dialogue and typic and, and sometimes that happens because they're working as independent filmmakers on low budgets. So they tend not to uh, lean really heavily on music and certainly not on sound design. But as we'll see with the clip from Fruitvale, you know the sound design and the music was really well thought out and fully formed for you from the very first film that you did. So I'm kind of curious about, I know you studied at USC, where did you learn how to use these tools um, and, and how, did that, how did that sort of understanding come to you? Um, I, I learned, I learned in, definitely learned in school. Um, and, and, and before I went to SC, I, I was at uh, Sacramento State um, in Northern California and my professor there, um, I, I took like some film classes like, for, like, as a, like as a minor basically, you know what I mean? My professor there, had actually studied at USC, 
So he kind of he kind of brought the, uh, the 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 model of teaching from USC to to Sacramento State. I didn't know that I was doing that yet, but um before, you know, they kind of had all these prerequisites for for uh, for the classes that 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 you wanted to take and. and um, kind of at the at the tip of the pyramid for the, for the film production minor was was you know actually getting the camera getting out getting to go out and make your own movie, but before you could do that you had to take a, a bunch of other classes before, and one of the first ones you had to take was a Pro Tools class, and I didn't really understand why you know uh, uh, at, at that time I was like well, you know why am I on Pro Tools like like Pro Tools was something I associated with people who made who made music you know what I'm saying like everybody that I grew up with that was like a rapper was doing you know making music at home they. They use Pro Tools, so that's you know I, it didn't make sense to me why, you know why I would have to learn that and and start with it and start with that yeah before you, before picking up a camera you know what I mean like um and and, and in that class you kind of learn how to how to move sound effects over and things one of the assignments that we had to do was um he gave us like a five minute clip from from Highlander, you know and, and each and each one of us in the class had to you know had to make it our own we had to pull all the sound effects you know pull everything and put it on there and it was it was amazing to me in that class to see how. You know, we screened 25 versions of this one clip, you know, and everybody sounded different. You know what I mean? Some, some people use comedic sound effects. You know, some people use, you know, really, really accurate ones. You know, some people were, were very, very simple in their sound design. Some people were extremely layered, you know. Um, and, and, you know, I realized that, I realized in that, in that class, you know, I was like maybe, you know, I don't know, 20, 20 years old, 19 years old. And, you know, really realized then that sound is, you know, sound is filmmaking, you know, um, and, and uh, kind of fell in love with it, kind of fell in love with it since. You know, um, and then so when I went to USC, uh, I kind of found out why my teacher was so 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 uh, you know, approached filmmaking for such a sound, for such a, a major sound emphasis. Is because you know, at, at at that particular film school, sound is a very big deal. You know, um, it's a very, you know, it's a very serious uh, uh, program there. And um, and what I found is, you know, is that a lot of a lot of folks who who uh, I want to say took took school to like the most serious. You know what I'm saying? Like you would find all you would, you would find all you would find all students in the sound program. You know, taking all, taking all, as many sound classes as they could. So I kind of gravitated towards that uh, towards that route from the from the first time as soon as I started started at grad school there. And I and I actually met met Ludwig, who's who, who's, uh, who's who's my composer. Um, you know, pretty much on everything I've ever made. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you guys started working together at USC, and you worked on Ryan Shorts. Is that right? Yeah. The first one was called Locks. And that was, uh, I think, uh, 2008, something like that. Yeah, like, 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 I met, I literally met Ludwig when he was fresh from, he was fresh from Stockholm. How long had you been in in, in L.A.? Three months, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I was like fresh. So you you got to catch him right before they learn bad habits, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He he was like he was living in like a um in a, it was a fraternity on campus at SC that had been they had been like banned for like a, a year. Yeah, or they something. got thrown out. And now it's only open for international grad students, I think. Right. And so I moved in there and it was it was on Fraternity Street, which for me is like, it felt like I was thrown into American Pie. And it was like, I was I was in my little room trying to write music and it was like parties constantly outside. And I was like, so it was a little difficult and we that's where I scored the first uh, Ryan's first short. Yeah, so, so I mean, and at SC, um, it was like a big emphasis on on um, not only sound but collaborating with composers, we had like a composing composition school right there, um, and, and you know, uh, I mean, incredibly talented musicians that 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 were that, that were our age and hungry and kind of looking for movies to, movies to score, you know. Um, and and I'm at Ludwig and a real, you know, they would have like mixers, wouldn't they? Like, they yeah, it was kind of like yeah, the school set up kind of like mixers for composers meeting directors, but. Yeah, we met real, real organically. Yeah. Like you know, I, I was kind of the best, the best part. Of, I was kind of the best part about it. We just met, like, yeah. like kind of randomly in that, in that place. <laughs> but your first little film didn't have any dialogue at all, so that was only sound and music. Right. Yeah, our first movies, they wouldn't. They, they, you know, we used to have to use these old, these old film cameras called the Aries. Um, we actually the last semester to use those, to use those cameras. As a matter of fact. So that's a pretty common film school exercise. You, you don't your first film isn't sync sound. You have to you just use music and sound effects, and it really kind of changes the way you think about those tools. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, how do you? you know, and I think one of the things that'll come through in the clips is that the use of sound design and music in these two films is very different. Um, rightly so, because they're very different types of stories. But how do you collaborate with these guys? Like, what's your process? Do you sit down? Do you watch the movie with both of them? At what point do they become involved in the process with you? Wow. Um, so, so, 
so a little, my, my relationship with Ludwig is, is is a little different from my relationship with Steve. Like like um, it really comes back to how we met. Like so, I met I met Steve uh, at, at Skywalker Ranch, um, and you I met you while you was working on Beast, right? Yeah, I was gonna do Fruitvale, and yeah. then the schedule didn't work yeah, out, schedule, and I was yeah. like, oh man, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And then every time I saw you, I'm like, come yeah. on, man, we're gonna do it, we're gonna yeah. do it, right? We're gonna yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, so so we, we met through Bob Edwards. It was kind of like through, through the Sundance through the Sundance Institute, um, and the San Francisco Film Society h- 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 hookup. Because because you were there, you were developing Fruitvale, right? And and, and you're yeah, going through the lab process, yeah. and that's how you ended up at Skywalker, exactly. Meeting exactly. these sound designers, exactly. And Beast was a, was a, was a um was a Sundance Lab supported film, supported by San Francisco Film Society. So so um we met kind of through that through that through that route, and then um and, 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 and scheduling didn't work out, and Steve was like crazy talented, you know what I mean? So we always would talk about you know we always be talk crazy. About, <laughs> we talk we talk about working. We always talk about working together. So then, so then when, it, when Creed came around, it, it ended up working out. So, but but like how 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 it works with me and Louis because we because we because we, we we really close friends now. You know, um, uh, usually like before I'm before I'm even writing something, I'm talking to him about what I'm what I'm doing what I'm doing next. You know what I mean? And, and yeah, yeah. Ryan basically told me he was gonna do a boxing movie like seven years ago, <laughs> but I. <laughs> He didn't That's mention. True. He didn't mention it was Rocky. He just said it, <laughs> no, no, it was just a boxing. He didn't right. know, but I was like, yeah, my next movie is gonna do. I'm gonna do like this indie first called Fruitville, and then I'm gonna do a boxing movie after that. And I was like, yeah, okay, in ten <laughs> years or whatever. But then we go. So you're you're thinking about sound design and music while you're writing? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's a, it's a, um, it's so important. You know what I mean? It really makes the, it really it really makes it really makes the makes the projects. Man, you learn on you learn on those small movies, man. Like, um. And it was it was a saying that we used to say. I can't remember like the, man, my, my brain's a little burnt. I've been writing like like all, all for a long time, not really sleeping much. But see, I got to ride ride with me a little bit. With, but it was a saying that we used to have. Um, it was basically like a concept that that people people will forgive bad bad lighting. Um, people will forgive uh, uh, pretty much every technical thing before they will forgive bad sound. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, and in, 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 so your movie could look, could look, could look amazing, but if, but if on every cut, you know, the, 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 the audio track is popping, making them aware, of it, making them aware of the cuts, like it'll pull them, it'll pull them out. Like it's, it's, you know, it's so important. And you got filmmakers like Orson, you know, Orson Welles, who used to, you know, used to, used to basically make movies over the radio. You know, what I, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's really like the, the, the the gateway to people's imagination is what they is, is is what they is what they hear. You know, what I mean, that's the biggest that's the biggest tool you kind of have as a, you know, as a as a uh, as a storyteller. You know, um, but you but you already have ideas before you start writing the script. Y- y- like basically, basically, when you tell me when we get started, it's like he sends me the script and and we we start talking about everything. It's like the sound, the music, and it's just, so it's very early in the process. Yes, and and what happened was was real cool with uh with Steve working on working on Creed was was that um you know we just knew we were working together real early so so it basically became the same basically became the same thing and 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 I was cutting picture um my like MGM was real kind they let me cut picture in the Bay Area uh you know so so I was cutting picture at, at Skywalker Ranch and Steve, was was it I, I shouldn't say what you was working I remember was it Pixels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, 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 Steve, so Steve was like busy grinding, you know, on pixels. But I would see him, man. I would see him like at lunchtime and everything. And then he, he would say, "Hey, man, as soon as you're ready, you know, bring it through, you know, um, send it over to us." And, and, and you know, while I was cutting picture, you know, uh, we were talking, we were kicking out, kicking around, kicking around ideas. And we gave you the, the uh, cause we had to cut, we had to cut the, the, the ending fight scene of Creed first, um, just for, for, for VFX purposes, you know, which, which, which we could talk about. But, but I knew that. You know, I was you know my first time working with work, working with a studio man, and they you know they putting they putting all this money on the line, and and and, and, and you know one thing that they'll one thing that they'll do a lot of filmmakers you'll you'll learn this you know what I'm saying one thing that they'll do is they want to they want to see you know they want to see the cut as soon as possible you know yeah, what, what I'm saying what do we spend our money on yeah they want to they want to they want to see that they want to see that cut as soon as possible and, and 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 they were kind enough to let me bring on a lot of you know they, they basically hired let me hire everybody who I wanted to you know they they, they you know they were cool with me hiring. Hiring Ludwig and my my sound designer is cool. Let me mix in, in the bay. Cool with letting cool with letting me have my editors from Fruitville to cut. So I was terrified, like that the first thing that they would see, you know what I'm saying? They would fire me. They'll fire everybody. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I was that was that was a, you know I was that was the energy that, that was the energy there. And 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 in in the in the DGA you kind of got like contractual you know directors 
you know, you got your, you got your contractual time, right? But because we had this VFX thing, this VFX scene that they had to get to work on, you know, they had to see that that section of the film early. You know, what and I mean? it's the climax of the movie. It's the climax of the movie, man. We hadn't we hadn't, hadn't even really had a chance to see how the, how the rest of it was 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 gonna fall into place. But but one thing that I that I knew was was look, man, if we can make it sound good, you know, we have it. You know, we had that much of a you know had that much of a of of, of, of a shot. So, um, so you know, I got got a little bit that scene as, as early as possible, and that was a scene I gave I gave I gave Steve to work on, and that was when we had when we had Dave too, huh? Yeah, and and, and um. So they got to work on they, they were working on that like crazy, you know, crazy early. And we were able to build a dialogue on on, you know, build a language, you know, for for, for how we'll be working for the rest of the, of the go. So uh, Ryan, I'm I'm curious for you, you know, as as the writer director, you know, the, the the training montage is such a such a trope for these movies, you know, for and especially I don't think you can make a you can't make a Rocky movie without a training montage, right? <laughs> So, but how did, I mean, knowing that, like, how did, how did, how did you approach it? How did you think about keeping it fresh? Was, was the music part of that conversation for you from the beginning? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I just, I just had a lot of help, you know what I mean? Like, like, um, I had a, I had a co-writer, I wrote, I wrote the movie with my, um, my buddy Aaron Covington, and then, um, we had Sly, who was also kind of like having another co-writer, you know what I mean? Um, you know, and, and, and in a way, like having a mentor, because he kind of invented these things. You know what I mean? He direct, he directed. I don't know if y'all know, but Sly directed like, you know, I think he directed four to four to six Rockies uh, that that had been out before. You know, you know, before we made before we made this this film. So um, you, you know, like it started from the writing phase in terms of like what ha what happens, and then and then you know, um, you know, in making it, you get a, you have you have a lot you have a lot of help. But then I would say from the sound from the sound perspective and the music perspective, you know um. It's really, you know, it's really a lot of conversations about about how you, about how you shaping it, like what's 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 going on, you know, like, like you know, montage is a lot of, you know, it's a lot of storytelling happening, right? And and, and why, why this one was difficult is because, you know, we kind of bit off more than we could chew in a way, um, in terms of how much story that we're telling, you know what I mean? Like in, in most in most montages, you, you you get like, you know, um, usually in sports montages, it's it's it's, it's you know, you showing you showing you telling the story of time passing. And you're telling the story of some kind of growth, right? You know what I mean? Like, right. like guy gets better, guy gets better at, at at basketball, football, boxing, whatever. You know what I mean? Woman, you know what I mean? Gets better at at, at whatever you know, whatever it is. You know, um, or in, in gangster movies, you got like the get money montage, right? Where I just do it, <laughs> like like push it to the limit. You selling you selling coke and hella money pile up. You know what I'm saying? Like, like them is all. You know, you telling you telling the story of time passing. You know, Scarface gets gets better at selling drugs. Buys more, buys more tigers. You know what I'm saying? Like that kind of, that kind of vibe. So, so, I, so you know, with this, you know, we telling the story of, of, of we telling the story of Adonis getting better at, at boxing, right? And you know, in a boxing movie, you got to tell the story of the, of the you know, of the, of the villain or the antagonist, or the guy that he's fighting. Also, you know, get, you know, get, getting prepared, right? But then we had to tell the story of, of, um, of, of, of what's happening with Rocky, you know, and, and and with Rocky, he he gets he gets he gets sicker. You know, then gets then gets kind of better. You know what I'm, you know what I mean? And, and then we got to tell the story of what's happening in that relationship. So it was a lot of it was a lot of storytelling that that, that that had that had to happen in that in that time. And then it was like about finding it, you know, finding it with sound and with and with music. I don't know if you guys want to talk about that. Well, yeah. I, so I, I got a question for yeah. you about that. But one of the things I've always liked, Steve, about your sound design is that you you you're, you have a lot of you have a very strong musical background, and so you tend to think about sound design. In terms of tone and, and and a musicality to it, and you understand how to use tone to elicit emotion. So I was, I'm curious about how you guys collaborate on this sequence because there's a lot of, for me, listening to this is a, and we'll see this much more clearly in the second clip with some of the elements are soloed out. But there's a really blurry kind of line between tonal elements, the sound design versus the music, and how did you guys collaborate on that? Well, Ryan, um, aside from being just writing good sound design. He's always thinking about what sound design should be, and he had a pretty good idea in his mind what it was going to be. I also, the first time I heard the cue, I thought it was so amazing. I didn't want to mess with it. Um, but of course, it's a montage. So it needs to be, tell the story and have the emotion. And effects are just there. Like, if you listen back to the bikes, there's just a whisper of them. And we did try playing it up a little bit louder. but it, And then we tried taking it out. And we thought, just having a little whisper just to keep them alive. Um, but I got lucky because I got to mix the music and the effects on this. So um, whichever one was going to tell the story the best at the time, we would all try it. 
and and Ryan's so good at collaborating with people and letting people try things and and because he wrote the movie that he directed he's he's got a sense for what it should feel like and so you can try all kinds of crazy things and he'll know if it works or not and if it does go for it this is kind of it's kind of a magical system that you guys worked out here because it's it's very often the case especially with the you know with a bigger budget studio movies that the stakes get higher that there's a little competition between the sound design department and the music department about jockeying for like who's going to step forward in any particular scene but you guys have a great collaboration with this yeah i mean it was just it was tons of fun and like i said it, when you have a score and a cue like this that is just working so well you don't want to mess with that so you would yeah i mean yeah this was i think version i think Ten or something. I did, you know, I probably wrote forty minutes of music for this scene, and the last six minutes of those forty minutes was what we, what ended up working. And it's something that was really that I learned, and why it was so difficult to score this scene is because um, I didn't. It's Ryan is really particular. I think it also like I, I learned so much on working with him, and and just especially for this scene. The music it's one piece of music going through the whole thing so it's and it's three theme, three musical themes and writing music writing a score cue for six minutes that's that that's has a thin red line through it <clears throat> but it also it also goes tells has to tell the story uh, and i didn't know that ryan like ryan wanted like when 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 you see um, Rocky getting sick. He wants he wants music to, to reflect that. And, you know, when you see him running in slow motion, that, that music really needs to reflect that too. When he's down, when he's up, like there, it has so many turns, and um, you have to make room for the dialogue. Sometimes, like music needs to drop out because they're talking, and you don't want to just fade that down on a fader like this. So you, in, the music needs to breathe and really and tell the story, and but being a, but also be a whole piece of music. Well, it also seems like it fits within the context of the Rocky world. You've got Rocky themes, you've got Rocky instrumentation, but you've got current music styles. And there's 808 at the end. I mean, it's got everything in it. And when I heard that stuff, I thought, this is, this is great because it's true to the Rocky movies, but it's contemporary. Well, I was going to ask, did you kind of, was there a process that you had to go through to get to that? Did you kind of rebel against? Because your score for Fruitvale Station is very kind of atmospheric. It's not, it's not a traditional symphonic score at all. So, but funny story here. You want to tell it? Like, huh? <laughs> That's a funny. Well, somebody's got to tell it. Okay. All right, so, so this, I'm, I'm gonna help yeah, you. I had no idea that Ryan would want this kind of music. Yeah, so, I, I didn't have no, I, no idea neither. Like, like um, so, so, so the funny story. The funny story is like, um, that like from the like, real early movie it was like. Hey, <laughs> He called me. He was like, "Hey, he was like, hey, bro. I'm like, what's up? He like, uh, hey, um, I'm putting together the, the budget right now. He like, we're not gonna need like live instruments or nothing like that. Like, no big score. We are gonna kind of do it like we do on Fruitvale, right? And I was like, yeah, that's, that's yeah for sure. And he was like, all right, all right, bet I'm gonna put the turn the budget in. <laughs> and then like in my mind, I thought we was we was gonna I thought we was gonna do basically like what we all we what we had always done, which was, which was real subtle, um, uh, you know, atmospheric. Um, and that's kind of ambient, how, yeah, ambient. Amb ambient. You know, you know, square that kind of comes out of sound design. That's what, that's what we had done on our, on, 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 on the last few shorts that we had worked on together. But, 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 but we, you know, we tried that uh, with, with with this stuff, and it just it just didn't didn't really didn't really didn't really fly. Yeah, we had a, we had a version of the movie with like a more minimalistic ambient kind of synthy score that throughout the whole movie, and and we sat through it. <laughs> at the screening and I was like oh, this is I was like this is not I, I was like I can do a lot better and <laughs> and you were like I was like I was like, well, what do you think I was like you were like yeah it's, it's cool you were like <laughs> you, 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 I, feel, you, I feel like you knew that it could have been better too you, like, you, you didn't really have the and you felt like something was missing like the energy yeah, you, you were like well, but you didn't yeah. know you, you didn't really know that maybe there wasn't the music though yeah, yeah I mean yeah we, we couldn't tell like, like, um, and, and, and the, I think the studio, I think the studio talked about it a little. It was like, hey, man, you know, you know, what's, what's up? Like, the music kind of, kind of setting us down. You know what I mean? It was kind of almost like, like, it was like, it was kind of like down. Well, you know. But the funny thing is that the studio, it was the studio when I was, when I was talking about the budget in the very beginning of the movie. They were like, 
you know, it's not going to be orchestra. The studio set that up yeah, too. They were like, yeah, they, we don't have the budget for orchestral. Like, yeah, we, we're going to keep was, it smaller. It was, <laughs> like, it was like they, a, found, they found it after the screening, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. But the, but, but it was it was it's, it's Sly, and Sly too, who got like a real good. You know, that's the other thing about the other thing about um about 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 Sly is that he he got a real dope musical ear. Like all that, all, you know, all of that Rocky music. You know, like the Conti stuff and the stuff that you know, the crazy eighty stuff, man. Like James Brown. All, all, all of that stuff, you know, he he had a big hand in 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 all, in all of that. He's got a great, he's got a great ear, great instincts, and and he was like, and he was like, hey man, like he was like, man, y'all can go, y'all can go bigger with this, and then, and then all of a sudden, it, and all of a sudden it was like, man, maybe, maybe you know, why not? And, and, and Ludwig's incredible, you know, when I first when I first met him and heard some of his stuff, you know, um, it was it was, he, he got great, he writes masterful scores, man, great, 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 uh. Skill for 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 for, instru- for instrumentation, you know what I mean, and um, and 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 on and on this one, um, I was like, man, let's just cut, let's just cut, you know, we thought we said let's just cut loose, let's just go go kind of go kind of big, and and the movie can support that. Yeah, and then once we once we once we went there, it was it was like like it, it really it started to feel it started to feel right, but we but we 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 had to find a way to embrace the embrace the new and put us in it because because. You know, Adonis is like a member of our, you know, a member of our our, gener- our generation. Um, so that was where the 808s came in, and the and the in the in the rap and, and Janae Aiko and, and yeah, Janae Aiko singing. Yeah, you, you've got this is the dance. This is the amazing dance between sound design and music. You got that beautiful sequence where, you know, uh, uh, where Adonis goes down, um, and 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 you're in his memories and all that stuff, and the sound design is really driving that. It's just this beautiful, subtle piece and then he comes out of that does that big air take comes up and then the rocky theme drops and it doesn't get any more satisfying than that right isn't that amazing so that that kind of sequence happened because happens because ryan knows how to use these tools and knows how to use them incredibly and effectively so how did that sequence come together? Did you guys play with that and 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 talk about that? And how did it change in, in the editing process? It kind of evolved, right? I mean, it, it was over a long period of time. But one of the things that I thought was most interesting about that scene that I didn't realize until I'd been working on it for a while is it's the culmination of all kinds of different points of view throughout the movie. Like in the very beginning, when he's a kid, we're kind of almost like watching it on TV in a way. We're totally disconnected. And as we start to get to know Donnie and we go with him to the first fight in Tijuana, we're ringside, so we're kind of getting closer. And so you can do different kinds of sounds when you get closer like that. The next fight, we're in the ring with him, so we're kind of experiencing what he's experiencing, so the sounds could get bigger and more dramatic. And then in this scene, we do all of them, because we're watching it on TV. Um, We're ringside, so we're experiencing it the way the crowd is experiencing it. We're in the ring with him. And then we also get to experience what he's experiencing. When he gets knocked out, we want to be like from his point of view. Um, and it was only after a while that I kind of realized that that was what was happening. Um, and we have those commentators on top. So there's scenes that we're in the stadium and we're in the ring, but we're also watching it on TV. It was like such a crazy evolution as it happened. And it's, I mean, it's this guy, like I said before, he loves to have people around him that want to try things and if they work, they work, and sometimes he would push us. Like we were really fighting to not have so much commentating going on. Um, and he said at one point, I think you said, I, "I like the energy, even if you can't understand what they're saying. It feels more like a fight." So it did. It just kind of evolved. The mix of it was really where it all happened. Did you guys? Um, what was that? How, how did you? Did you always know that you were going to use the Rocky theme, the classic Conti music? So. From the beginning, when 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 I got started, I asked Ryan, "Are we going to use any Rocky music in the score?" And it's like we talked about it, and it was like we it was like, "No, we're not going. We this going to be a new story. We're going to tell a story of Creed." And then the first scene that I got to work on was this fight. So I had just gotten hired in the movie, and like Ryan said, it he was scared of getting fired. Like I was even more scared of getting fired. So. <laughs> He sent me this scene and was like, write music for this. And that was even before I have any themes or anything. So I was like, oh, like I didn't even know where to start. So I kind of scored. It's it's also 15 minutes long, the whole scene. So I scored it. Mostly just like kind of what we did for Fruitville, mostly like ambient sound design and, and sounds and stuff. And then and then in the end of the scene, there was one moment where 
where he stands up and I was like, okay, well, I'm I'm gonna make like something that I know the studio is gonna like. So I put I put in the theme, the Rocky theme there because I thought they were gonna like I liked it too, but I thought they were gonna okay we we were gonna hire this guy. Um, um, do you remember that? Yeah, but it wasn't it wasn't a minor version. It was like not really exactly how it is here with the, with like the. Like in the original version, it was like a more uh, gruesome, uh, dark version. It was real slow. Yeah. It, it, was, it was dope. And, and, and like what was crazy, what was, what was cool, what was cool is like when in, in post, you know, like um, you get those feelings like when like you know like like uh, like back in the day when you were waiting on something in the mill, like when it was when we used to still really use the mill, and like <laughs> like good and like good stuff came in it. You know what I'm saying? Not just bills, but like. Like somebody said, say, "Hey, I sent you some," and you like you like waiting for it, and you get it. Like like in post, it feels like that a lot of times. Like like when when you know when Steve's like, "Hey, I'm working on that scene. I'm gonna have it in like the next couple of days." Like you waiting on it to see what he did with it, and like with Ludwig, it's like that with us in the editing room all the time. Like we in there working on a picture, and then um, it's like man, Ludwig got got a new thing for us. He just put the music on this scene we just sent him. So you run, you play it, you know, and and, and then I, I got you know, like I said, I, I work with two um. With two great editors, and I remember the day that he sent us, you know, the first the first pass on the um, you know, his first his first pass, and it was like a shot in the dark kind of vibe on on the, on the, on this on this scene, and um, and I remember when it got to the, you know, we listened to the to the Emmy and stuff, you know, everything was working, and when it got to that moment, um, where where he kind of snuck the Rocky theme in there and, and didn't tell us, all three of us stood up, like 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 involuntarily, you know what I'm saying? Like we all like we all st we all stood up when we heard it. And like we looked around the room, and it was like, oh, shit, that shit was that shit was tight, like, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 and so you know, that, that, was, that was you know, we talked we talked about it then, and that's, that's what we kind of and then from there it was kind of like, man, maybe, maybe we, you know, maybe we should we should embrace, you know, we should you know, that kind of played into this to, to, to this idea of um of kind of embracing that you know embracing that embracing that stuff that stuff more. It's great. Coming up, you know, when I was mixing it, I don't know if I ever told you, but when I first got the cue. And we're mixing along, and everyone's in the room, and I'm, I was mixing the music, and I've got my hand on the fader, and I'm riding it, and all of a sudden the Rocky theme comes up, and I was like, ah, I can't touch this, I can't touch this. <laughs> like I was a kid when the thing came out, but yeah, the whole room went nuts. So that's awesome. Well, um, we're running, a, we're running a little bit behind, but I really want to talk about Fruitvale for a minute and to, to show a clip from that. And and the, one of the reasons is because we talked about this a couple weeks ago, but I think a lot of young you know, filmmakers who are first starting out and making their first movies on a shoestring budget really don't necessarily think that creatively about sound design and music. Fruitvale Station has amazing design and music. And uh, we're going to show uh, a little clip about five minutes. And it, again, spoiler alert, it's from the end of the film. Um, you bookended the film with the shooting. Uh, you start the film um, with uh, like cell phone footage of the shooting. And then we come back to it at the end. And by the time we've taken the journey with the characters and we come back to it and, and it's, it's, you know, it, it's not cell phone anymore, it's, it's really happening in front of us. Uh, this is a really immersive experience. So I, I feel like we, we should acknowledge Michael B. Jordan tonight too. He's uh, kind of been an important part of all of this. You don't, you don't see a lot of uh, first time directors making scenes like that with sound design like that and, and music like that. One of the things that struck me about the, the film it was just so smart and so powerful is is BART and the trains. Um, you know, I lived up in the Bay Area for about 12 years and I know what those trains sound like. And you use that just as a constant presence in the neighborhood. You 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 understood how to how to build that world and use that sound. And then you integrated the BART sounds into your score in a really creative uh, way. Um, I'm, I'm just curious about, from a sound perspective, how that scene came together for you. Um, and specifically the music, the music would kind of, you know, ride surf the, the tension and then it seemed like it would de-escalate and the music would kind of step back a little bit and then would it was I, I think it's just a masterful scene yes to, uh, man, I, I was I would say I mean it's just a tough movie for me man. I, don't, I, don't, I haven't seen it in a long in a long time um you know uh and and, and just, just watching it kind of bring, brings back a lot of a uh, lot of a lot of you know a lot of emotions um uh Yes, I mean sound. The, you know the Bay. I'm, I'm from the Bay Area, man. That, that movie's about that movie's about home for me, you know. And 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 um, and it was one of those things where you know I was so I was so excited to make this movie, man. I, I felt I felt really fortunate in that 
you know, it, it, while I, while I was making it, if somebody told if somebody told me, hey man, this is the last thing you'll ever make, you know, you'll make one movie in your whole life, I would have been happy. You know what I mean? I feel like I was, you know, I, I feel like that was a movie that I was I was I was kind of, um, I was kind of born, you know, born to, you know, born to make. You know what I mean? Like like and and so I would think about, you know, I, I would think about I would think about Bart, you know, in in because you live in San Francisco. It's like what's crazy about it where is I'm from the East Bay, you know, um, and, and the Bart trains are 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 uh. They're elevated in the east in the east bay, depending on where you depending on where you are in, in Frisco, they underground. You know what I mean? So so when you live in when you live in Oakland or Richmond or or, or Hayward where Oscar was from in San Leandro, you know, you constantly hearing you constantly hearing the sound of the trains, man. Like you don't to a point that you don't even notice it. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I didn't notice how much I heard it until I moved to Los Angeles and I didn't hear it anymore. You know what I mean? Um so so it was one of those things where uh, you know, this movie was about home and and, and and you know we knew that the, the the train sound would have to be a you know would have to be a presence you know what I mean it's like sometimes it's just you know so it, it, it's 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 a bit ominous you know um I think uh uh now you know but, but when I was you know before Oscar was killed you know what I mean it was it was a, it was a sound that would bring me you know great comfort you know what I mean it was a sound that you get to the city I associated right? with home you know you know what I mean and 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 and, and now it's, it's you know it's something different for all, for all of us you know but but but. You know, it was it was a start of a it was a start of like a lot of a lot of real cool 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 stuff like working with Bob who who Steve worked with. You know, Bob was a sound was a sound designer on this film. He sent out uh, Casey Langfielder who who actually was there every day while we were shooting and he recorded like a uh, uh, production sound. You know, straight for the for the for the. You say he came to the set while you guys every, were shooting every day. Wow, that yeah. never happens. So yeah. to, to have the post production sound team, the sound designers come and hang out with you guys on set and record while you're shooting. Yeah. That never happens. That's an amazing approach. He was super fortunate, and then Lovick took took that stuff and um and uh yeah, that was the first thing I think you sent me. It's like I got all these, I got all the Bart sound sounds that from 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 your recordings from from the Skywalker recordings and and kind of manipulated them and cut them up and pitched them up or down or just put them through different effects so they kind of turned some some of the they turn into more of a musical element, and combining that with with other other musical tones and stuff made it sound almost like music. So almost every sound in that uh, in the last um, scene is mostly of the Bart manipulated sound design that I kind of chopped up and screwed around with and made into an emotion. Yeah, it's I mean it's it's. It's even it's even hard just to talk about it. It's such a powerful sequence. Um, do you guys have anything else that you want to add to that, or should we uh, open it up for a couple questions? Let's get some questions. We can't see anybody, so um, I see you right there with your hand up. Oh, I got to repeat the question for the, uh, for, for, the audience. yeah for the okay. for the audience. Uh, this this uh, this uh, gentleman uh, wouldn't have any advice that Ryan might have for him. And he also wanted to know about potential internships because he is 14 years old. Man, when I was 14, I didn't even know. Like, yeah. Oh, that's your parents? Your parents are right here? That's oh, awesome. Right. right. So me and Lou, we got a company. We just kind of just kind of getting started right now. It's not at the stage to hire anybody, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think. But. <laughs> In a couple of months. Maybe a couple of months. Yeah, we gotta get your your parents um contact contact info. I don't think it's is it legal to ask a minor for like they <laughs> for like they <laughs> give, give me your phone number, kid. Like, <laughs> like uh, there's no, no, there's but, no, but, but, there's uh, no lawyers to, here. We talk, to your, we talk to your parents, bro. And as far as advice, man, I, I would just, bro. I mean, that's, I, I would say I'll tell you congratulations, man, that you just young and you found what you love to do. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I I wasn't I wasn't. I definitely wasn't there at four, at, four, at fourteen. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, and, and uh, you never know how much time you got, bro. So, 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 so I would say, go get it, man. You know what I mean? And, and, and um, the biggest advice is, man, find you know, filmmaking is a collaborative, a collaborative art form, right? And, and and right now, uh, a lot of the actors that are breaking through, you know, they they're people who make their own stuff. So it's great that you that you uh, that you got an appetite for making your own. Making your own stuff, you know what I'm saying. That's the fastest, that's the quickest way to 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 to, to doing anything is making your own, making your own content. If nobody can hire you, hire yourself type vibe, right? You know what I mean. And then um, what I would say is, is find people who who you enjoy working with, because it makes it it makes it much easier. You know what I'm saying. I I I, I 
you know, I would love nothing more than to get a beer with these with these two dudes here to my left. So it makes it easy when when we working and somebody's paying us. You know what I'm saying? Like it's great. You know, um, you know, it's always great to get paid to do something you would do for free. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like and and and, and so I would say find find collaborators that you that, that you that bring out the best in you that can be honest with you that you all that you also like like working with. You know, um, and be good to your parents, man. Like that's. <laughs> That's okay. awesome. Other questions? So the, the, the question was really about like how do you decide how to you know where to place music, where not to place music. Um, sometimes you you've got really emotional sequences where there's no music in it, and then other times, obviously, like with the shooting scene, the music is, is present. So how do you pick and choose how to use that? Um, I, I mean, one thing one thing Louisville and I would talk about like uh, like uh, was this idea of dynamic range. And it's something that you'll that you'll hear about, like um, in, in like photography and sound, but but it's like having having like you know great 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 differences between your highs and your lows. You know what I'm saying? And like that's kind of that kind of being what makes stuff feel complete. And 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 for us in um in in in, in that movie, we wanted like a high dynamic range. We wanted times when it was a lot, times when it was a little, and, and it was kind of an easy choice for for for, for us in that in that movie because you know um. We taking a we really take an Oscar's perspective, you know what I'm saying? Like that whole movie, you with you know you you with this character, um. So so when it so when his life is taken, uh, you know the scene the scenes after he passes away, you know there's not much of anything, you know um, until the end roll. Yeah, to that to that end roll. Yeah, to to that to that yeah, real beautiful beautiful music over the credits. But it, it's kind of like um, uh, you know it was an emotional movie, man. And, 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 and you know I didn't know Oscar, but I had been there when when um. You know, somebody you love get gets they like gets cut short, you know, by gun by gun violence. And it, and you left with it, you left with like an incredible sense of emptiness. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it's it's uh I'm kind of feeling that a little bit with, with Ali, you know what I'm saying? Like cause you you know, with Ali it was different because you kinda of expected him to live forever, you know what I'm you know what I'm saying? And and how many of y'all woke up this morning and kinda of had that feeling, right? It was like where it's like shit, like you know, it feels like like something's missing. So like we kinda of tried to character characterize that through you know, through through sound, you know what I mean? Like you hearing all this different stuff. Like Oscar's like that dude, he was that dude who played the music real loud and rolled around and he was that dude who was noisy with his family and who would come home and wake the babies up and, and all of that stuff and, and you know his family still dealing with that that presence just being totally gone, the silence there where 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 he where he was. So that's what he was going after. Yeah, I, I when I saw the first cut I was kind of I mean, we were having discussion. I was like, I don't really think that you need any score at all. like and uh but then we had a couple of more conversations, and we we started experimenting a little bit. But so the question was, um, the lessons that you learned from uh, from Fruitvale, and how did those flow into Creed in terms of uh, sound design and music, and your collaboration with these guys? Yeah, I, I mean, you, you learn. Uh, I, I learned. Um, you know, you learn so many things, man. It was it was it was my first time making a feature film, so, so that so, so I think the biggest learning learning um, lesson came from from um, the, the idea of time, you know, and, and how. You know that's really what you, you know, with filmmaking. You know, I, I grew up as an athlete. You know what I'm saying? Like with and with, and with sports, you know, your your opponent is very clear. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, you playing the, the dude on the other side of you in, in football or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, or or, or you know, or sometimes when you practicing alone, you competing with yourself, right? But when, when you're making a movie, you always going up against time. Like time is the time is the ultimate opponent. You know, um, and and my first time making a feature, it beat the shit out of me, bro. Like like just the, the um, is it kids in here? Oh, we good. We good. Oh yeah, my, my man right here, 14. <laughs> but you was born in like 2000, 2000 what, bro? 2002? So Jesus. <laughs> you had to go there, didn't you? Bro. So, 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 yeah, so, so you, you know, like, like, you know, waking up Monday through Friday and making a movie 12 hours a day. Like that first week, I felt like I had been into a car accident. You know what I'm saying? Cause, cause, cause making a short, you know, I only would work on the weekends. You know what I mean? I was, that was the most I had ever shot a movie, you know, was three days in a row, you know? So, so, so now it was, it was, oh my God, it was five days in a row. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and that first week, I, I don't know, I don't know what happened to me. And, and, you know, you realize how precious, you know, how precious time is um, when, 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 you know, you gotta get a cut ready for Sundance. You know what I'm saying? You gotta get, you, know, you gotta get the cut ready for the Weinstein company. Your movie goes out, you know what I mean, and everything's gotta be done. And you run out, you run out of time for, for, for collaboration. So so I learned like, you know, 
you want to be early as possible, man. You want to get, you know, I want to, you know, I'm writing a script right now, and I and I, and I got to get it in the little league's hands as early as possible. So we got the most amount of time to to to, to talk about it. You know what I mean? The most amount of time to, to have those creative moments that Steve was talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like, and 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 if if you don't if you don't have that time, you know, you you seriously harm yourself. That was the biggest the biggest lesson. So for Creed, every, everything I was trying to do was trying was just trying to do everything as early as possible. But I, I would say too, you know, um, amazing sound design and music moments like what you saw in Creed don't happen by accident, and they really don't tend to be found in the editing room. They're written that way, they're shot that way, they're designed that way from the very beginning part of the process. So, uh, you know, you, you've done a, a, an amazing job with that. Yeah, right here on the end. So the question was, when did you know you wanted to make Fruitvale? Yeah, it was probably like, it was probably like the moment, you know, like the moment that um. The moment that I, that I that I heard about it happening, you know, um, you know, it's the same way. Same way you you, you like like my, my my brother's a musician, and he and Ludwig took him to like he just moved to L.A. and he like getting used to L.A. and everything. And Ludwig took him to a took him to a party that kind of like blew his mind. And then he and then he went home that day and he wrote a song. He wrote a song about it. You know what I'm saying? Like and and, and, and you know as him as a musician, that's how he processes stuff that affects him that affects him emotionally. You know, like like so 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 for me, I. For me, it's all it's all as movies. You know what I'm saying? Like like if some affects me emotionally, I think about it like as a scene in a in a movie. And and, and um, you know what happened to Oscar really messed really really messed us all in the, in the Bay Area. It messed us all up. You know, and I, so as soon as I heard about it, you know, I, I kind of thought about it. You know, so the question, the easy question was, uh, how hard was it to pick the two walkout songs right. uh, for the fight sequence? It was, you had the British song right away. We had the British song. We had so the song that that uh, Colin walks out to. Uh, the Crept and Conan, Don't Waste My Time song, we had that pretty much right away. We cleared it. And for the for for Creed's walkout, we tried to get a custom song written by like a prolific artist, but that didn't really fall through. Did you have those when you shot? Uh, or did you know we, did you know what those sequences what those songs were gonna be we, when we, you filmed? We we knew we knew the the Crept and Conan one, the one that the one that Conan walked out to. We knew that he played that while he walked out. Um and kinda walked out and kinda walked out thinking about that. So it could, so it, you know I'm sure that helped his performance too, right? Yeah, 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 yeah it helped. It helped him on. It helped him on a lot. Like the song called "Don't Waste My Time," and, and, and it's a British, you know, it's British, it's British rap. You know, um, Tony, as although he don't really look at, he like a, he like he a he, he a black dude from Liverpool. You know what I'm saying? He listens to that music. He knows all those artists, so it worked really. It worked really well for 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 him. Um, and he thought of it like like Colin is like like feeling like it's a waste of time for him. So he really loved it. And, and everybody likes that. Everybody likes that song. Um, but, but for but for for Adonis, it was it was tough, man. Like it was it was down to the wire. And you know, money comes into play with that with that stuff. So we so it was like, man, what songs can we afford? Um, you know, and, and and we were trying to get somebody the right 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 one. And, and and it was like it was down to like the mix day. It was down to the mix day, right, Steve? Oh yeah, <clears throat> we were changing them out. You want to talk about how that, that process like? Cause you do a lot of a lot of movies, bro. Like like what's that process? Like, um, like we, we pick a song. Um, the, you, they change out all the time, and the clearance thing is usually the biggest part of it. It's like this is something that we tried in the cutting room, and it works emotionally. And then you got to get it cleared. And, and sometimes we go back in after the film's done and replace the music. Yep, that happens sometimes when it doesn't get all done right. <laughs> but I didn't do it. So there's a uh, you have Ludwig score obviously, but you also have source music uh, in in Creed. And so, what was the process of picking those songs, and why would you pick a source song as opposed to using score in, in a given? I moment? think your question is about the one of the characters in the movie is the original is a singer, and she's performing original songs in the movie. And I think she wants to know why you you chose to have uh, write a character like that in the movie. Uh, wow! So, so so yeah, we 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 were we were making we were in the first few drafts that Aaron and I wrote. Aaron and I wrote, you know, our co-writer, um, uh, the character Tessa Thompson plays in the film uh, actually wasn't a, actually wasn't a musician in the first in the first. You got you got that draft when she wasn't, bro. Mm, no, you, nah? mm, no. You don't remember it? No, I don't remember it. Yeah, yeah. So so, so she so used, changed it. She used to be some. She used to be like. Uh, she wasn't a she wasn't a musician at all. Like on a, in the first draft, I was I actually just went back and looked at the first draft, cause 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 um I was trying to see how long it was, and uh and I and I went and found it in my email, and like the it's so it's so much different, man. Wow, but but um, she, she, you know, it was kind of a note that we came that 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 came about, 
you know, that that that, that we should make her uh uh her 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 journey kind of mirror Adonis. You know what I mean? So that so that when Adonis when Adonis meets her, he he sees, you know, Adonis is such a driven such a driven character. You know what I mean? And 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 so so it only made sense that he would that he would that he would if he were to be attracted to somebody, um, you know. It, it, he would be attracted to that drive, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and so, and so music made sense, and we were trying to make her, you know, she was kind of representative of Philadelphia, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, contemporary Philadelphia, you know, and, and and Philly's kind of known for, you know, Philly's known for 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 being working class, um, it's known for for uh, for boxing, and it's known for for music, you know, um, and, and 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 so that kind of kind of, it kind of made kind of made sense to make to make her a musician. Uh, we cast it, we cast it. Um, we looked at we looked at a, a real wide range of 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 of, of uh, actresses. We even looked at some 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 real you know some real some real musicians that had never acted before. And Tessa is a, is, is a you know a phenomenal actress, and she's also a, also a musician as well. So like so, you know, as soon as we casted her, we were so lucky to have her. You know, we basically I basically got her in the, in the Louisville studio like the next day or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, you casted her like three weeks before you started shooting. So we yeah. had three weeks to write all of her songs, which was about, you know, five songs that we wrote. And she was in the studio and we wrote them together and she's singing them in the movie. And it's pretty, it was pretty incredible. And I think Donald came by and wrote, wrote, wrote one. Louvay works with, with Childish Gambino. He's in Childish Gambino. Um, and I think, yeah, Donald, Donald Glover came by and worked, worked, worked with her on, on some. And, um, yeah, we were just in the studio for two weeks just writing. And it came out really cool. It came, yeah, it came out amazing, man. And, and, and we were inspired by like um, it was kind of the music that, that we was listening to when we was writing it. Like we was listening to a lot of uh, a lot of uh, Kalela, Kalela, and, and FKA Twigs, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, Scissor, uh, from TDE. We were listening to all that stuff, and, and, and you know, so so she so so Tessa's character kind of kind of became um, you know, the Philly version, the Philly Philadelphia version of of of, of, the, of that. Um, and it, it was it was it was exciting, man. That was like some of the funnest. Funny stuff was watching Mike learn how to box and, and watching and watching Tessa make this album. You know, I, I, I mean, I should hire good, hire good sound, sound, sound makes sound makes is one. You know, I'm mean? great sound designers is, is, is one, and, and, and it just you know you know finding out what places sound like. You know what I'm saying? Like that's 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 the big thing. The big thing is, is is you know it's just research. You know what I'm saying? And and um and and. And getting getting with cats that have that have good that have good ears, you know, like 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 with the Bay Area, like I can close my eyes and think about what the, what home sounds like, and and, and and pick out those things, you know what I'm saying? Like like uh, and with Philadelphia, we had to get out there and learn what it learn what it sounds like, get in get into those boxing gyms and, and, and figure out what those you know what you, what, you know figure out what you hear. You want to talk about some of that, Steve? Yeah, well, one of the things that Brian did really well, if you look at the movie again, there's the locations have interesting sound built into them. So like Rocky's house has a train going by, and that means every time you go to Rocky's house or his neighborhood, you can justify putting a train in. Trains have like really great kind of evocative emotional quality to them. Um, uh, the gyms are always like right by these these uh, what was it? It was like was that an elevated train or yeah? yeah. So another spot that you could put stuff in. So um, then then it's just collaborating. I mean he's Ryan's really good about letting you go for it. And like I said before, because he writes his movies, he knows deep down emotionally what it needs to be. And however you get there doesn't seem to matter as much if it works. So um, one of the things that was, that was really amazing is when you had a very, very first rough cut, we brought it to Skywalker and showed everybody who was going to work on the movie. And it was like everybody who was going to do anything on it and then wanted to sit around and talk about it. And so we started talking about ideas and then um, we had a conversation about, I think you had said that you really wanted to kind of go for it on this one and just be big on Creed. And as I was watching it, like I said before, there, you could see there was an evolution in the movie. And um, one of our early conversations was you said you wanted to have like the, the, um, the Tijuana fight be really kind of rough and gritty and dirty. Um, but you can let the cinematography kind of lead the way. You know, you could see exactly what stylistically is going He's going for if you're paying attention. Yeah, and I, I would also say that why, why the score and sound design is so, why they get so elevated with the movie, it's also because for me, like the way we work together and the way that Ryan talks about music, to me, it feels like even though Ryan's not, doesn't have any training or uh, uh, school training or in, in the music or music theory, I still feel like he's, like we went to 
we know the same about music. Like he's just so good about talking and describing and and <laughs> and, and, and yeah, <laughs> and explaining what you want. So he, he putting it on thick, like not. Oh. <laughs> Nah, Gotta this, get that this, gig. Yeah, this dude is crazy when it comes to like, when it comes to when it comes to, when it comes to music, man. Like, like um, I, I'm, I'm I, 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 you know, he speaks another, he speaks another, he speaks another language, man. And, and Steve, Steve, Steve's the same way on the mix, on the mix console. Like, like, you know, like one of my directing teachers, man. If I had been sleeping more, I could tell y'all who, which one it was, but but <laughs> it was a great one. And, and and they told us like when you when you making a movie, you know what I'm saying. You in good shape when you the dumbest dude on set. You know what I'm saying. Like you as a filmmaker, you want everybody to you know if if I can walk in the room with my crew, and I'm and I'm the stupidest guy in the room, and I'm in, I'm in good shape. You know what I'm saying. And that's kind of how I felt. Uh, you know you know when I was in the room with, when I was in the room with these with these guys, man. You know you just you just gotta learn how to communicate what you need, and they can you know they can and they can make it. Make it happen. Well, but I think a lot of directors do struggle, especially with music, about talking about they don't because they don't speak that language. Like, so when you're talking with Ludwig about these sequences, and we're talking with Steve about like, how do you communicate what you need them to do, in a, with a particular sequence? Man, I just I just try, man. Like, and I and I I mean, and, do you talk about like I, I, I want to feel this kind of? Yeah, or yeah. How I do you just, approach? I, it? And I just try to like I feel I feel like with a communication, man, honestly, is the best. Like I tell them all the time, I don't know what I'm talking about right now, but I'm thinking it's like this. You know what I'm saying? And that and that's better than trying to hide. My own, my own ignorance at times. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, um, and, and I just try to, like, 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 you know, like I, like I said, like I said, I just try to talk to them in terms of the story. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and, and not think of them as technicians. You know what I'm saying? Just think of them as, 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 as storytellers. You know what I'm saying? And talk, if I could talk characters and emotions and, and, and you know, what, the, what we know, what we know, what we trying to get across, then, I, then oftentimes, like, you know, they, you know, we, we, we come to a, to a, and not come up with ground. good ideas. Well, yeah. as you're as you're seeing right here, there's no ego. That's the thing. You know, you don't have to worry about being afraid of trying something and experimenting with him because he's not going to slam you for it. Um, and it just inspires everybody around to try to do their best because they want it for Ryan, really. Oh, that's what it was, man. I'm not bullshit. He's a nice guy, man. I can't come up with a better way to end it than that. And we're out of time anyway. So I want to thank Ryan and Ludwig and Steve. Uh, for bringing these clips and talking about these amazing movies. Thanks, everybody, for coming Thank out. God.